Because the way I see this Maslow's hierarchy, if you're at the top, you're always hitting peak performance. Yeah. Life is short. Why not be able to live out of that peak performance in your life and eliminate all the BS that you're feeling, the uncertainties, the stories, the narratives? Because even doing the self-healing, right? Like look, looking at yourself five years ago, you probably felt, you probably had so much noise mentally that you could just clear that you overcame. Welcome to the Frontline Warriors Club, where we live it, not in it. Join us on his mission as we raise consciousness. You can find us on wearefrontlinewarriors.com. Now let's take a moment to inhale. Exhale. And let the show begin. What's up, guys? On this episode, we're going to talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's a five-step system or approach to achieving self-actualization and it's a basically a psychological motivational process yeah. i first heard this in nursing school when we took psych or even back to like psychology like classes, genads, right? genads, yes mm -hmm. and for those that don't know this is a very fascinating concept made from abraham maslow which was an american psychologist and if you take this theory and think about things it makes a lot of sense of where you could assess humans and maybe you're mm -hmm. in the healthcare background listening to this you can use these hierarchies to assess how the patient's also doing and where he needs mm. self-esteem or emotional needs because we see patients with so many things going on and financial crises and, and et cetera. So it's a cool concept. Mm. Yeah, it's like those times where you have a very sick patient and um, they're like financially stressed. Yes. And you see how that hurts our fundamentals and how they can't focus on better, on better things and bigger things because they're kind of stuck uh where they are yeah and they're supposed to be at the hospital healing but instead they're trying to focus on the first hierarchy of need and they don't have the basic psychological yeah. help to sustain themselves from a financial standpoint yeah you know what's a, another episode that we could do an episode about positive psychology i like because this is like so maslow uh he focused on positive psychology so you know there's psychology that focuses on like your past your childhood so he was more focused on the drive like that's kind of behavior, psychology, yeah, cool. yeah. Because you know how you're, you have, you go through different parts of life. So each of those are could be attributed to psychology, right? Yeah. So sometimes you're going through shit. Sometimes you're progressing real, real hard, and real quick. So he he focuses more on like that, that. Okay, the drive of the human of yes. why things so cool. Yeah. I love this kind of psychology. So Maslow, Abraham Maslow, is the guy that created this theory, and his theory suggests that pe people have several basic needs to pursue social, emotional, and self-actualizing needs. Mm. So you, at the end of the day, the top of the pyramid is self-actualization. Everyone is str uh, striving for that. Mm -hmm. And one thing to keep in mind is there's no endedness in this process. There's no end point of you having some monk mode, level 99 maxed out, mm -hmm. and there's no more work. It's an ongoing process. So what I mean by no endedness, you're always going to be looking to improve in every single aspect of your life because that's what a human being does so whether it's your well-being or you being fulfilled or you getting creative you're also there's always there's always going to be more for you to uh to get after mm -hmm. yeah and usually you see that's like a pyramid so like matt said back in, in psychology class 101 or nursing school or wherever university you're at when you see this pyramid that was always maslow's hierarchy of needs so it's a five-tier system the most basic one is your physiological physiological needs that's your food and your clothing after that, once you have that accomplished, you go to safety, which is like job security, roof over your head, shelter. Once you achieve security, you move on to love and belonging, and that's your friendships, the connections you make in life, your 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 peers, your job, your influence, things like that. And then self-esteem comes after that. That's how you feel about yourself. Because then you understand how you feel and you understand what drives you in a sense. That's when you move on to the fifth one, self-actualization. Because you understand your needs. And once you understand your needs, you can finally realize all the people's needs. Right. And, and it's like, it's cool because with the self-esteem part before sex, uh, self-actualization, if you don't love yourself or you don't have the confidence or you constantly doubt yourself to, to fulfill that goal or that desire, you're always going to be stuck there because you're mm -hmm. going to be fighting yourself versus hitting that uh, self-actualizing pyramid. Mm -hmm. So it's really awesome to be aware of where you are in your life to see 
what roadblocks you might be experiencing. And what's beautiful about this theory and the way this pyramid structure works is usually when it comes to physiology, um, physiology, you need that first step for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But the top of the pyramid, I feel like it could fluctuate a little bit where you might not you might be single and maybe you are looking for somebody, but you love your family. So you have that part of love taken care of, but you're so focused on self-esteem and self-actualization. And that it's like that layer of the pyramid is not fulfilled, mm -hmm. but you can still make time for it or eventually fill in that gap. Yeah. But if you never did it in your life, then there's, there's always going to be that void in that pyramid. So maybe you might be a little bit more shakable as a structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn dude. Right. It makes sense. You know, it, it does make sense. It makes sense. Um, and then like that pyramid, the five steps, you could break that down a little bit further, a little bit deeper where the first four are considered your deficiency needs. And those four are your physio physiological needs, your safety, love and belonging and esteem. So this is where, where motivation starts. So these things motivate you always to, you, these have to always be fulfilled. If those aren't fulfilled, you're always motivated in something. Yes. So that's like your motivation phase. That makes sense. Once you get motivated by these things, then you could finally reach self-actualization. So it's like your basic, your first four, if those are not, not always being met and held to a regard, you can never reach self-actualization. You can never, never be that. Eventually you're going to put, you could, you could do fluctuate, but if those first four are, are not met. There's no fluctuation. Yeah. Especially when it comes to the first one, you need safety in our society. So a lot of safety. Of course, when you think about safety, we always think about the outside world, like police and law and order, but sometimes safety could be within yourself. And a lot of people don't feel safe as humans. There's like yeah. anxiety that's looping around and be, being afraid to be in the dark or being outside or being afraid to leave your home. And it's wild how that physiological step of safety just cripples mm -hmm. you where you stay at that point. You're stuck. Yeah. And it's just, and it's just being aware that, Hey, your mind is just playing these tricks on you. It's okay. Mm -hmm. you, you have to first tell yourself you feel safe and then battle the, the shadow side as Carl Jung mm -hmm. says that, Hey, it's okay. I, I feel safer. Uh, what is that thing in psychology? When you have like fear phobias, you expose yourself to little bits of fear yeah, yeah. to get past that. So if, like the feel of elevators and stuff. Yes. Go step a foot in a foot yeah. in there, a foot one out, whatever yeah. it takes. Like who's really putting this, this fear into you and this anxiety. Is it just yourself? Because if you're the one being anxious about yourself or you're the one that's only bringing on your anxiety, that nothing's going on, but you're anxious, like that's, that's you yourself calling yourself to be anxious. Yeah. And then you don't, you don't feel safe. And if you don't feel safe, how is your body going to get better if it's always in fight or flight or what if it's always scared of something? You can't live like that because you're always living in fear and you don't even meet that second tier, which is just safety. It's yeah. crazy. And it goes down to that level because think about it. We're not... We're not our ancestors where we were fighting for survival every day. We have different stressors than they had, but it's just still the same response. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what kind of stress that is. If it's safety and belonging, like you mentioned, because you have some fear, it, 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 it still articulates itself in the same ways, always fighting for a response. So yeah. it doesn't matter if you're getting chased by a tiger or if you're just freaking yourself out. Your body only responds to that stress the same. It doesn't know how to make it a different stress. Right. And what's beautiful about what we're just talking about, and we have so much... We have so much data from the nursing background and profession. A lot of people do research and they, they look at the numbers thing. We have firsthand experiences of what fear and anxiety can mm -hmm. do to patients where yeah. like the, from the anxious standpoint, they always have diverticulosis, bloating, colostomies. The, it's like the same common theme. The anxiety always manifests here, causes so much organ disruption. We see yeah. these patients with freaking ostomies and it's, it's real life example. So is that just, so the thing is like, is that poor diet then? Because think about it, like their basic need is first one is your, their physiological needs. So they're getting physically sick, right? Yes. So they're getting physically sick because they have poor diet or what's actually making, making them sick. Right. There's, there's so much factors. Is it just them or this. a diet? Is it a poor diet and a poor mindset? Is it a good diet and a poor mindset? Is it a bad diet with a good mindset? Like, yeah. like what's the, what's the best way to approach things? Yeah. I guess ideally it would be having a good mindset and a good diet. But which one falls off that fucks you up the most? Yeah, I know. It's a million dollar question. Yeah. It's just more data, more research both? and seeing how that gets affected. Yeah. So we can look at the, the deficiency needs and growth needs. So these five stages are divided into deficiency and growth needs. So the first four levels 
they're all focused on deficiency. So if you are lacking those things, you can't get to the top of the pyramid, which is, which is called growth. With those four stages, if you feel completely satisfied as a human, now you can be motivated to follow a deeper purpose, follow a deeper passion, or do something that's more fulfilling beyond yourself or giving value to other people. That's like the highest virtue of good. And there's no duration for how long you're going to last in those four pyramids because things might always change, right? On the lower level, you might be progressing to higher needs and things might uh, not be satisfied in your life or you become habitual and you're not directing your mindset towards like the next set of, next set of things. So always um, be aware of those like four psychological needs, which we'll go into more depth and see what you need in life and where you're lacking and how you can adjust yourself so you keep on fulfilling yourself and hitting that top tier. Mm. Top tier because the way I see this Maslow's hierarchy if you're at the top, you're always hitting peak performance. Yeah. Life is short. Why not be able to live out of that peak performance in your life and eliminate all the BS that you're feeling, the uncertainties, the stories, the narratives? Because even doing the self-healing, right? Like look, looking at yourself five years ago, you probably felt, you probably had so much noise mentally that you could just clear that you overcame mm. that makes you a better human. So that's why with this whole Frontline Warriors, everybody should be, actively taking charge of trying to feel better and actualize because we could create a ripple effect of conscious humans, which will just spread. It's like freaking this energy is toxic in a good way where it's just going to help um, society. Yeah. And like thinking about like crazy concepts, what if earth gets affected by us by the collective consciousness? So a perfect example is like if you have like cities and these cities are made up of people that have a collective hive mindset, which mm -hmm. creates a consciousness. You go to New York, it's fast paced, but the collect collective consciousness is, is in San Diego mm -hmm. and it's always laid back. People are always positive and we call it like a vibe. Yeah. But what, what makes that co collective consciousness and why is it different? Yeah. If it's the same country and same people speak the same language, but yeah, it's right. different. And that's, and that's what was crazy. Cause I heard this on the Donald, you know, Donald Duncan, Donald Duncan, no, it's not his name. Danny Joe, Danny Joe Danny Rogan, Rogan? And, Joe Rogan and the other um, comedian. Donald Truss or Duncan Trussell? Duncan Trussell. I guess, I guess he's the one that made the the Netflix show. With yes, the, um, yes. Uh, what is it called? You know what it's called? No. Damn. And he said that our president represents the collective consciousness. Yeah. So take a sip of water. Does it though, or is it or is it just spun that way? How do you figure it out? Because how come we all agreed? Because technically, secondly, in a presidential election. The majority doesn't doesn't win. The Democratic majority wins, right? Or like the whatever the numbers add up to. Yes. So you can have more votes as a person, the popular vote, but you still we're not president. So you're more popular, but you're not president. Right. It all depends on the the electrical. The electoral college. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So so think about <laughs> so like yeah so look at this collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's if we get affected by that. If we want better people in office and a better society, we need to change the collective consciousness of the humans so mm -hmm. we could have better people elected because no people that are operating in a high vibe would have these two clowns run, run for office. So if you're watching <laughs> the news, you're laughing at this. Like, how, how do people not yeah. see this the shit that's going on? Yeah. But that's that's a side note. We're going yeah. into politics. Yeah. <laughs> no, none of that right now. Uh, know? Yeah. We inhale and exhale in the beginning. Come on, dude. Try it again, you know. <laughs> All right, back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So we go a little bit deeper into these these five steps of the pyramid. So physiological need. We'll start from one and we'll go through five. So physiological needs. Once again, those are your biological requirements to exist as a human. So air quality, food, water, shelter, clothing, warmth, sex, and sleep. So you have those basic primal needs, because for us as humans, we have to physically be able to survive. If you can't physically survive, then what are you chasing then? You're just chasing life at that right. point, trying to survive. Right. And if you can't get this one done, you're always going to be in the freaking rabbit hole. Always. And in the hamster wheel of trying to get out of mm -hmm. this because you're always trying to look for shelter, sleep. Like basically being ho homeless. Like being a homeless per person, as an example, they can't focus on any of these needs usually. Because I feel like they're already, I think like homeless people are probably in number two, to be honest. Because I feel like they're still, they don't die right away, right? Like they're still surviving. They have encampments. Like they're yeah. physiologically. Could, they, the government helps them they out. Don't, they don't. They don't collapse and die on the streets. You know. 
sometimes they do after you know certain amount of drugs and things like that but but they're they're they like get survive for safety most part. which is number two which yeah. makes sense because as humans after we have the basic needs met that peter talked about the animal instincts in a sense you're going to look for safety and everybody wants to experience some predictability some control mm. in their life even though complete control is bad because that's gonna, that's like the ego in a sense and it's going to not allow you to creatively flow mm. in the world you need to have at least those basic needs done yeah. police department and society or schools or business or medical care have those functions of society operating so then we can focus on achieving security there mm. and achieving security financially because mm. it's a, a, because safety is more complex nowadays so it's just everything employment having safety almost like in friends or family having wealth well-being so that that's a pretty big category yeah so a good example is you want to safely get to work but you also want to work somewhere where you enjoy your life that's what safety means like we could all agree on the hey we're good human beings we could get to work safely no one's gonna interfere with us we're gonna drive our car safely to work we're all gonna get in on the right side of the lane we're all gonna follow each other and safely get to our destination yeah. that's your safety we all agree on that but if it's dangerous for you to get to school for example it's dangerous for you to get, get to work you're probably gonna have a lower tier job you're probably not gonna go to school as often because it's physically danger, dangerous for you to go, you go to school. Yeah. Even an per- interesting example in our lives, we do nursing and there's a lot of unpredictability mm. at work. We don't even know what unit we're going to flow to. So sometimes from a safety standpoint, looking at this, it gets so exhausting being a nurse because you can't focus on your other esteems, friends and family. You're completely locked away for those 36 hours, yeah. becoming selfless, selfless, giving nurturing and love to another human. But if we were just doing this for 36 hours a week, you would have time to still enjoy friendships, relationships, laugh a little bit. Right. But that part of our life gets taken away so Completely. much. And and during, at work, that's all we're focusing on, safety and need. Yeah. Do you have time to pay your bills or whatever? Not as much. No, you don't, right? Yeah, it's just all about somebody else. And you just want to yeah. go on some reels and look about some dumb stuff. To do you want to disassociate show. for a little bit. Disassociate. Yeah. This is very true. Even though we're not going through those safety and physiolog- physiological changes and needs... Are- the patients are experiencing in the hospital, we were there helping them during that phase. So it's almost like we feel for them. Yeah. And that's like emotionally and psychologically draining. And even though we're not physically in those situations, we're not as bad a situation that they are, but we know where they are in life and we know how they feel. And the fact that like it hurts them, it almost hurts us. So it's almost like we're hurting for 12 hours too. And in a deep sense. Yeah. Right? It's a trip. It's like, like there's a reason why like we're sucked into that environment. You know, it is exhausting so for some so for some reason. Our motivation is in the safety, safety and physiological needs of area. society. Us, yeah, like we're focused on that for some reason. Right. Well, so it's like so it's like, are we already past the three, fourth and fifth phase? Because now it's like we're almost helping the one and two phase. Yeah, we're literally giving a helping hand because yeah. I, I mean, when I'm outside of work, I feel like I'm five. Yeah. Just talk about like, but yeah. Oh man, I feel I feel great after work, dude. I dissociate so good sometimes. <laughs> dissociate. Yeah. That's been bottomless been <laughs> yeah, mostly for it, breakfast, dude. night shift. Giving us a handshake, dude. <laughs> man, JK, JK. you know you're gonna. Uh, not to make it too nursing wise, but you know you're in for a, a rough night if the day shift nurse tells you, "Hey, I don't want to back in the morning." <laughs> it's I'm like, yeah. damn, okay. Now I know this is gonna be busy. <laughs> it's yes. gonna be busy. You yeah, they're going through some shit. Yeah, again, because it's just a patient that's emotionally or physically draining mm-hmm. and that's why it's so crazy how the schedules get made for that yeah so let's look at our third phase or third tier in this pyramid love belonging and needs so every human has a sense of community it's even in the bible with like adam and eve there's always partnership happening so you always want to belong you always want to be heard and understood those mm-hmm. are very important um like physical needs and sometimes people are dwelling in three because of even like childhood trauma, let me give you an aspect. Because if you are not trusting yourself or you can't create intimacy or safety within yourself, you're always going to be longing for something you never get mm. because you're you're always trying to seek it from another person. So it's just being aware of where you're in a relationship and how you're connected. And if you feel like you're part of something, that's why we like combat sports and jujitsu mm. and being there in a sauna and talking to people and just being just belonging to a community of of combat sports so it's yeah. it's so important not only are we friends but we need seeking that fulfillment and belonging in different ways mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's a good way to put it, dude. Respect. Uh, number four is your esteem. So this is your dignity, your achievement, your mastery, your pursuit for reputation. Those are things that have, have to deal with almost how, how valuable do you see yourself? Because if you can uh, take a guess or estimate how much value you provide, it's almost like you try to provide more value. Because if you're like, if I could do this, anybody else could do this. So let me strive for a little bit more. So you put yourself almost in like a pedestal saying that, hey, I got to figure myself out because if I don't figure myself out, I can't figure else anybody out, anybody else out, and I can't progress. Because you have to figure out what really drives you now. Yes. What do you really value? And are, are, are those your actual values? Because they're not your actual values, then are you stuck in love and belonging? Because if you're love, because your values are focused on love and belonging, then guess what? You're not in the esteem portion yet. Right. You think that you are, but you're being codependent yeah. in a sense. Sometimes so still, like some yeah. people, yes. You're, you're still, you still have to figure it out, kind of a sense. Yeah. And that kind of makes too sometimes when people are in poor love and belonging partnerships mm. because of the steam which was for that was lacking the whole mm. time. So it's crazy how these these categories could uh, fluctuate depending on what life situation you're you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that quite? Is that crazy, bro? The fifth one is your self actualization. This is your you could say it's a final tier, but it's not static. So just because you're here. Doesn't mean that's all you're self-actualized, you know, you're the Buddha in the room. No, this is like an ongoing process. So this is your, your chase for self-fulfillment. So you had, so th this phase, you're not so much thinking about yourself anymore. You're trying to seek peak experiences. So you're trying to almost push everything else with you in a sense. So you're going to like be with people that are more focused on building something instead of like trying to build themselves up. Yeah. So very project driven, th things like that. It's, it's just that drive, the next drive. Yeah, and one, one thing that I like about this category, it's like, what are the characteristics, which was in the yeah. beginning. So spontaneity and independence and ability to have peak experiences. So it's interesting how you need all those categories fulfilled because mm -hmm. a lot of times if you don't have internal safety, and other things happening in your life, you can't experience life and go with unpredictability and be comfortable because you know yourself and have these awesome experiences. Because mm -hmm. one interesting thing is when you know how Bruce Lee says, "Be like water." So what if like people think that they're moving through life? What if they're being still the same the whole time mm -hmm. and life is happening through them? So well, you know the game Pac Man. A lot of people think that. Uh, Pac-Man is going in a circle and eating things. But what if Pac-Man is being just really still in life and depends what where you point the mouth and that's what it's eating? Mm -hmm. Just a, just a concept right now. So that's yeah. why like in life, just be like water. Something I learned yesterday mm -hmm. is just acceptance or yeah. you know wanting to do something because you have the desire and then your body t says, oh, I don't want to text like this. This is going to look weird. Does it make me feel awkward? What is that? Why? That's already the resistance right. versus trying to be like water and flowing. Yeah. And just, again, this is where the work comes and ask yourself this question. Why is there resistance in my life? Why is mm -hmm. this happening? And then, yeah. The only thing you control is, is what you do. Everything else is just like a response. Yes. And it's how you take on responses because you're not responsible for how that person felt. If you're always honest, honest with yourselves, honest with the people around you, you're very self-actualized because... You're not basing your feelings, your emotions, your words on what someone else is thinking. You're giving them the, the honest answer and they're waiting for that person to respond. And if, and if they fuck up, they don't respond properly. Well, then guess what? You only know the fucked up response. You don't know the background. So it's like, right. if you're not, if you're not on, honest with somebody, you're not going to ever get like a deeper connection with somebody else or something else. Yeah. Because no matter how, how what they meant, it's how you took it. So, so it's your, just you your perception and vice versa. Them. Yeah. So it's like, why not just be honest? It, it shouldn't be that hard of a thing because if you're lying, what does that lead to? Why is a person? Who the fuck knows? Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Where do like lies, which are that small, like come from? Yeah. Like, what are you not having fulfilled in that hierarchy of needs that's creating so much friction and you need to lie to, right. to have people think sp something specific why? about you? It's, a, you're, it's almost like you're putting up a roadblock. Or pull up, putting up an extra path. Yeah. Instead of it being like a simple walk straight, now you're putting a hole or something like I jump over the hole. Like why? That's crazy how honest it works like that. And honest people are always gonna be around honest people because like eventually, the lies catch up to people. They do. Shit, you know.
that's why I like some sometimes watching those like FBI movies and they were like sharing like experiences. Like imagine being a double agent and pretending to be somebody the whole time. How draining having multiple mm. personalities or how imagine how deep you're in that mission where you have to know areas and addresses and dates you went on because you're mm. building a relationship with somebody but you're lying the whole time. Yeah. Like it's yeah. I could imagine how draining that is yeah. lying at the end of the day. Right. Yeah. So what are some of the characteristics of people that are self-actualized or self-actualizers? So like, cause we have this idea of self-actualization and it's different for everybody, but what are like the general characteristics of people that are in that phase? So you, so you kind of could tell where you are in life and then you could adjust accordingly. Cause it doesn't matter where you are in life. You could always go one direction or the other. Like we just thought about honesty. Honesty yeah. will take you, take you somewhere. Lies will take you somewhere else. So it just depends on, on how you portray yourself. And we want to surround yourself, and that's where your growth is going to be. So you can only get yourself out of the situation you are in, nothing else. So like one characteristic could be they perceive reality if efficiently and can tolerate uncertainty. Uncertainty. So that's like the way you deal with stress. Yes. We deal with stress very well, bro. Yeah. Tell you right now. Cause, Thirty-six hours back cause, yeah, at it. Because yeah, I feel like we deal with that much stress in where we work, or it's just like that shows us how bad life could be. So it's like this isn't really a big deal. And then you get to not stress so much about it. And yeah. yeah. Uh, number two, accept themselves and others for what they are. So open mind, open mindedness. And this is crazy because I, I was writing this list and I could name an example for each of these where you both experience this at the same time. So like imagine um, number two, accept, them, accept themselves and others for what they are. So remember when you were younger and we started to look into different religions. Yeah. And when we became okay with different religions. So we already knocked that one off the list, bro. Right. At such a young age. Yeah, it's crazy to think about. Yeah. We already were accepting of literally everybody in all religions yeah. versus always living in this thing where you have to be this religion yeah. to achieve afterlife. Right. Like, I'm Catholic, so everyone around me has to be Catholic kind of thing. Yes. Isn't that crazy? At such a young age, too, bro. We were, we were shorties, bro. Yeah, yeah. We're old souls, man. Yeah. We, so, we yeah. must already lived this life and figured out the che- right. cheat codes quick. Yeah. So it's like, when did you become accepting of like people with like piercings or tattoos or gay people or things like that? When did yeah. you start like just being okay? Like they're just on a different part of life. Yeah. I'm not on a part of life. You know, I wouldn't do that, but you know, they could, they could kind of do whatever they want. Yeah. That's one thing, one thing that stood out to me, it says un- unusual sense of humor. So it's just being you Dude, because yeah. everybody's that authentic self. And you can tell when somebody is being uncomfortable in their own skin, not being themselves mm. in a social social setting or just talking to them. Just yeah. like, be you, man. Yeah. Don't be afraid of my responses or reactive humans. Yeah, so I guess if you laugh to yourself sometimes, it means you're, you know, you're pretty self-actualized. Yeah. Because like, things are just funny, funny to you, so you just laugh yeah. at them. And you, you can know? judge yourself and laugh yeah. about it and be yeah. okay with not it. Not a big deal. Yes. Uh, spontaneous and thought and action is one of them too. And that's literally how we've been after, after we graduated nursing school. I just started doing random stuff. Yeah. Randomly. Just pop. Started a blog, started a podcast, YouTube channel. And just work we keep on self actualizing. Yeah. Now all our side projects and stuff. Yes. Yeah, dude. Always always in that state. App websites up. We got FW, you know, front of warriors. Making a resource podcast. page recurrently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, life is life is and imagine because it's ima- spontaneous. Like you we, we don't plan for this. It's just we work with what we got. It's a straight business. Always. That that's why life is interesting. It's like you're being the Pac Man and Life's throwing, you know, things at you or mm-hmm. something that work on in a business venture. All right, I'm just going to turn my head the other way. See what life is going to, yeah. see what, you know, cool. co- uh, what am I going to collect on this side of the of the thing? Yeah. And I, I like how it well, says that's establish. A, that's a phrase when, when one door closes, another one opens. That's kind of a thing. Yes. Always being open to that happening. Mm-hmm. Establish deep, satisfying interpersonal relationships with a few people. So that's just really mm-hmm knowing yourself ultimately so you could have a deep visceral relationship and that's i think that's even how partnerships is the deeper you know yourself as a human the more you can contribute to your relationship with a significant other and get to know them with depth asking great questions Mm -hmm. or vice versa maybe your partner is not as self-actualized and you want to help them get there so you could understand these characteristics so whenever you feel like their esteem is suffering and they need a helping hand because you're in a self-actualizing category, you can do that and offer them a safe space to maybe heal specific wounds or give them reassurance that everything's okay. It's okay. You could feel safe within this container to actually do things. So I don't know. I was going with that, but yeah. you, you could basically, <laughs> but, here we are. but here we are, but you could help your this, partner. This falls into peak experiences. Peak, I just had a peak experience. <laughs> yeah. I don't Self-actualized know. right here. Self-actualized. <laughs> yeah. But this is inter 
uh, relationship, interrelationship. It's <laughs> trying to get the word here. Intercommunication? Yeah, you could interstellar? communicate interstellar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for sure. But yeah, it's just, you can grow with another person through this and being patient with them and helping them grow and, you know, not taking life so objective, like, oh, they're judgmental people. Okay, well, we can see why they judge and see why they have maybe different morals and mm -hmm. ethics or standards or values. And you can work on that together and, and blossom. Yeah. A really good one here is very interesting. Need for privacy. So it's, you still need that, that alone time. And if you don't get enough alone time, this is going to tap into your self-esteem again. Because if all you hear is clatter and noises and you don't have time to just be with yourself and your internal thoughts, you're just getting, you're just in a room with people talking always, always, always. And sometimes you, you forget who you are and why you want to achieve, achieve things, why you want to do certain things, things that drive you. Sometimes you lose a sense of yourself just because there's some, so much stimuli telling you what to do, how to act. You're looking at people, you're getting different thoughts and you're never really able to, to continue to just be your true self. So you should always push for privacy. And it's crazy because as humans right now, we're kind of stuck in that phase in a sense. We're always on our phones, so our phones don't think about us, what we write. Next step is imagine having a camera when you sleep, when you're awake. Wow. You're not gonna, ha you're gonna, have, that, not gonna have privacy. So it's like you're always going to feel that you're being looked at. So you're always going to, almost in a sense, natively try to, try to fulfill someone else's thoughts of you. Because you're, you're it's really hard for you to always be your true self if you're surrounded by somebody. Right, you need to just see how you're yeah. thinking. And if the, you always think roommate. someone's looking at you, potentially, you're always you're always on alert, like instinct instinctively because you're like like what is the person always you're always thinking what is what is the person think that's looking at me right? Do I feel safe yeah. around that person? Yeah, and it's like virtual, so it's crazy having a camera in like your room forever. Yeah, even like when uh, we do like lives sometimes, mm -hmm. right? In a sense, yeah. How come this recording is easier to do versus a live? Right. What does that live do that there's somebody literally peeking through really? another screen yeah. versus somebody's watching this video right now but they're not it's not happening now yeah and it gives us more safety than it being live where you're just like slightly uncomfortable we're still rolling with it having a good time yeah yeah number 15 number, excuse me <laughs> <laughs> number 15 yeah i'm gonna have some water number 15 on here strong moral ethical standards so that's like your values can you ma maintain like your form like your true form are you gonna settle for something that you know you don't you don't want you're just settling just to make things easy or satisfy somebody else's needs that's gonna dig you in a hole it might be easy in the beginning but then you're like damn i really believe in this and i really thought this and i really wanted that and this person or situation is not giving me that so it's like damn it's almost like you feel like you wasted time and it's interesting how, how that shit works because if you like all your standards and your values once again you drop them back down into self-esteem issues because yes. is that your real value? You got to rethink that shit now. You're like, damn, do I really value, it, value in that case? And, and if I do, and I'm not happy, is it maybe a different value that's not being met? Right. And so often because we have this, the people next to us and we feel looked at, mm. we drop our values yeah. for other people. Yeah. And then if we do it for a month, three months, six months, and you feel that your self-esteem drops and it's like, mm. why? And then you have like, oh my God, I dropped my values. Right. It's yeah. such a... The thing is, yeah, but the thing is, they could change over time. It's like, which, which values can you kind of settle on? Because maybe you've never experienced, or you've had these expectations, but you know these are not realistic. Because how can you say, this is going to give me this, even though I've never experienced this? Yeah. Like, um, let's just say, this cake is going to make me feel full. But you've never had that cake. So how do you know? It's still a risk. Yeah. So as some as it is, and you're like, okay, well, cake was bad, but it's satisfying me. So you're okay to settle on that. No, yes. you just adjusted your morals a little bit, but you're not, not tapping into your self-esteem yet. Yes. Because you're, you're okay with that shifting. Right. It's, it's crazy to think about. Mm -hmm. And it's wild how we're giving people like characteristics or we're going to go into behavior leading into self-actualization. But there's no like single point. Like this is it, right? Mm -hmm. There's always a but in this clause in the yeah. sense that we're, 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 we're very good at dissecting both situations and giving perspective. And that's what like life is. This is not a complete rule book. Like here, here are the rules. This is how you should live. But it's just realizing in your situation where you're giving things away. Mm -hmm. We're talking about um, boundaries right now. Somebody in there is listening to that boundary if you break it or not. You just have to be honest with you. We can't mm -hmm. tell you how far you could push that boundary. Yeah. So some behaviors of people that are self-actualized is experiencing life like a child. 
full absorption and concentration, which is just being very self-aware in the moment, not worrying so much because all those needs are met and you're just being present. Yeah. Uh, trying that's, why, that's why they say children are the most honest because when a child says something, they say it without any kind of emotion attached to it or experience. They just say it right, wrong. They don't know. They just say it. Because they can. Because they okay. can. And that's it. Yeah. So that's why you got to experience life as a child because you shouldn't care what people think of you so harshly. Like certain experiences, like certain experiences, yeah. Like if I'm going to church, I'm probably not gonna wear swim trunks and no t-shirt. I'm respect. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, you gotta have that kind of a <laughs> that kind of a little little balance. A good example, you know? bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Swimming trunks, yeah. Yeah. So and you know and yeah and you gotta live live like that. Live life for yourself. Be selfish for a little bit because you have to. Because if you're not selfish with, with yourself and you don't understand why you pursue things, you're not gonna understand why other people pursue things because they pursue things for the same way. Or the same reason that you pursue things. Which is perfect with this point. Listen to your own feelings and evaluating experiences instead of the voice of tradition, authority, or the majority. Yeah, damn business. Yes. Very powerful. It's a very powerful statement right there. It is. That's something we could run on for sure. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, for office, for sure. Governor-elect right here, bro. <laughs> Let me save that one. Yeah. Avoiding pretense, game playing, and being honest. What we just talked mm -hmm. about is you're not thinking about butts or oh, I'm going to do this for this person. They do this for me. There's no games. It's mm. just one love. You guys are just doing it out of love versus when you fulfill me, I'll fulfill you type mm. of thing. Yeah. Nothing expected. Like you don't expect this for that. Yes. It's just you're you're there right there with that person and you're just doing it. Yes. Uh, Take, it? Taking responsibility, working hard, and mm. trying to identify your defenses and having the courage to give them up. Mm. So it's like almost don't put up that wall Yes. that you want to put up. So it's like your emotional well-being. It's like that intimacy thing. Like you have to be almost emotionally available, physically available, financially available. Because if you're available on those tiers to somebody, technically you're, you're with them. If everything is like chilling. Yes. If you're chilling physically, if you're chilling emotionally, if you're chilling financially with them. You know, of course, saying financially is kind of superficial, but it's like you want to be able to, for example, take someone on a date and pay for it. Groceries. And, and, and be okay yes. with that. Yes. Yeah, and be okay with that. And not saying, hey, we're going to split this 50-50. Or you got to be okay with that. Because why do you got to do 50-50? Who cares? You know, I'm, I'm going to pay for this and I'm, I'm just going to pay for it. And then whatever you pay for, you pay for it. It's not a big deal. Because your finances are in check. You're so okay. you're not worried about yeah, it. Yeah, you're okay with almost like, if you had to pay for everything, you pay for everything. Because that's where you are. You're okay with it. Because that's just money, just transfer value. It's not a way the thing that makes you happy. It's just a way to get you to where you want to be. And you do great things. You do great things, yes, yeah. with it. Yeah, then you got to be physically available. So... You can't just always be a cyber couple, right? Like you can't like be with like you and I can't be really good friends being separated, you know? Right. Because like yeah, like if you think about our friends that are in, in Chicago, we're still friends with them, but not on as close level as we are because right. we we live in the same house. We're physically present for each other. It does. And make people people need that from a friend, a family doesn't matter who that is, and that's part of being self actualized and self actualized behavior, and then emotionally. Yeah, you're physically with them, but can you talk to them in a proper way? Can you communicate your feelings? Like, yes. hey, what you do doing is upsetting me. So can you not do it again, right? Because if, you, if I don't tell you what's upsetting me, no. how are you going to be able to, you know, change right. for me, right? And you have to be content enough to change for that person. Like something is, and that's where you go back to your values, is what do you want to settle on? What, what do you not want to settle on? Like you probably wouldn't be down with me fucking, um, you know, <laughs> Doing some stupid shit at three o'clock in the morning, busting yeah, your spots, right? right? Like it's like a it's a mutual respect. Yeah. And, if, and if you feel like it got disrespect, you right. just you just let somebody know that yeah. hey, you interrupted my personal space, and then they, exactly. Yeah. Like if like if I was grinding at three o'clock in the morning, sleeping during the day, like that wouldn't work with right. work with you, right? It wouldn't work with me either if it was flipped. So it's like you, you develop this kind of like a safe safe space with other people. Right. We're able to be yourself and also be with somebody else. Yes, and communicate those needs like mm -hmm. you just said for. Loving and belonging, flowing pretty well there, man. I feel like I could took some piece of advice from you just listening to that. Keep <laughs> on going. <laughs> yeah, simple things in life, you know. It is. It really is, man. Yeah. But the crazy thing is, you experience it in your own way. So an artist could be just as happy in life as as you. Somebody that's working at McDonald's, McDonald's manager, even though they have a different status as you, they might be content working at that because from wherever they came from, that's such a higher step up. Yeah. And, and and they're happy just to be there because they could put their kids through college and they're and they're chilling. That's their life. And they're self-actualized. Some people are having, are okay with having kids at, at our age. 
that's a different path of self-actualization. Yes, and but it is a path, exactly. Mm, yeah. And so we are focused on business, and that's currently their self-actualization. Right. They slowly figure shit out. And I love these characteristics traits because if you look at not listening to the opinions of other people not being popular, look how much stress we endured from our families where they didn't believe in us, what we're doing right now, yeah. or travel nursing, leaving the state. Why aren't you married, have a home, have some kids? Yeah. And we have to just be okay with the third pillar there, not having that support from them, but having the steam to self-actualize what you want to do, yeah. not, what, not what they want for you. Mm. It's so deep. Yeah. And just, yeah, it's, life's a beautiful right. gift. And that's what's also interesting is that there's people that go to school for psychology, but at the end of the day, just like you said, you have to live it. Life is the best teacher experience. Mm. You could have people that are psychologists that are that know this knowledge, know how to hack into somebody else's brain, but why can't they do it for themselves? Yeah. Because knowledge and experience are two different things. You need, you could be book smart, but you need to go and be street smart and live mm. that life that you read in textbooks. Right, like that couple of nurse episode with a gentleman with a safety and a comment. So yes. yeah, you could tell a person, walk into the room, tell a person, hey, my name is Peter, you're in the hospital, can you calm down? And they're confused. Somebody's gotta give them the Ativan. That's kinda <laughs> how it is sometimes. Indeed. You know? Indeed. Just and what's cool about self-actualization, it's basically you always trying to strive for your potential. So this, so this is not like you're self-actualized and a giant breakthrough, you're happy for the rest of your life. You have to always be pursuing your full potential. Some of the stuff that we see when people wither away or they tend to decline in life, when they get older is because they retire and they don't know what else to do. And if you don't know what to do mentally, your body's not gonna, not gonna know what to do physically. So yeah, we have this physiological clock, but we could extend it by trying to always be, trying to fulfill something, fulfill, fulfill our potential. If we're trying to fulfill it and we're pushing ourselves to, to strive for something, that's enough push for your body to keep going and stay healthy in a sense. And something that I just thought about is that last pillar, it's about growth needs, not deficiency needs like the other one. So a piece of advice for somebody that's listening, how do you attract somebody or a partner or a friend that has self-actualization? They're already living this experience. And I just thought about it that because self-actualization is growth, you need to find somebody with a growth mindset mm -hmm. in life. That person will align with you because they'll be self-actualized if they're willing to grow on things, grow in the relationship, grow in their business, not being stagnant because there's no such thing. It's either you're growing and becoming better or you're rotting in this sense, yeah, you're, you're decaying. So yeah, growth mindset for anybody that wants to find this like-minded individual that's mm. self-actualized. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up with the deficient and the growth stuff because you can't grow when you're deficient in your, when you're deficient some kind of a nutrient, for example, a flower. If it doesn't get sun, water, and soil, it's always gonna be deficient. Yes. And once you give it sun, water, soil, that's when it starts a growth process and it grows. So that's like very fundamental right there. Yes, I love that analogy. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, let's end it with this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Give us a comment, share. Let us know what other episodes or topics you want to hear about. We'll see you on the next episode. See you guys in two weeks. Peace. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the show and want to support the podcast, please subscribe, leave us a comment, or give us a like on all platforms at We Are Frontline Warriors.